Meet Jess. She's 25, a BBC journalist. But in virtual reality, she's pretending to be a child. Go on in. Into VR Chat, one of the most popular apps. The age limit's 13. Some rooms look innocent enough. But there's pole dancing and strip clubs too. Oh, hello, miss. We can hang out, watch a movie or something. Isn't it school time right now? And there are two people to the side of me now who are um, trying to get on top of each other. OK, so there's like a group of people that are like simulating sex. I want to say there's like five of them. And they're definitely in children, I'm pretty sure, because of how they sound. There's avatars, right? And these avatars can go naked. And then Jess is assaulted. Oh my god. What was that like? Horrible. Um, it was strange. It felt like it was happening to me. Stop it. Leave me alone. It's like the Wild West, and I wouldn't feel safe as a sibling of younger children having my siblings play on this. And if I was a parent, I wouldn't let my children in that kind of area. It's too adult. We showed what Jess had found to Andy Burrows at the NSPCC, and he's horrified. It's just the most shocking uh, breach of any responsibility. I am angry because um, Facebook promised us uh, Disney levels of safety. Um, this isn't a theme park. This is um, a, a set of virtual worlds where children are at risk of grooming, of sexual abuse, of really harmful experiences. It, it speaks to a corporate neglect. These are sites that are dangerous by design. Today, we're going to talk about the metaverse. Mark Zuckerberg thinks the metaverse is the future of the internet, even rebranding Facebook as Meta, spending billions right, of dollars on the perfect. Quest headset, which dominates the market. You need a Facebook account to join in. There are games and apps right. made by Meta and by other companies too. All right, here we go. The so-called metaverse doesn't actually exist yet. That's just the name given to a series of games and virtual reality experiences you get to using a headset like this one. Choose what you want to look like, your avatar, and you can start exploring. The question is, how safe is this world for children? Catherine Allen studies VR. I met her in her virtual office while sitting beside her in the real world. Not everything's perfect in this space, is it? No, it's a bit of a wild west, to be honest. Simulated sex is something that you see quite commonly. If we don't get on top of it, if it's not regulated and legislated, if the public aren't aware of what's really happening, children going to these spaces unsupervised, then we could see really a, a hotbed for potential grooming, predators, and also experiences that children are having that may well be too early for them in their development. Predators are just having a free-for-all with these kids. You know, I this man this has been investigating VR chat rooms, chat rooms for months. He's worried for his safety and wants to remain and anonymous. And it's all very He's made a YouTube film and even met and interviewed a 14-year-old who says he was groomed well, and raped in virtual reality. Did they try to do things to you? Yes. Uh, you'll see 40-year-old men hanging out with 12-year-old boys and girls. It's like a nightclub, but if you are running a nightclub and you d can't afford a bouncer, so you just leave the doors open, well, you're going to get shut down because, yeah, I get it. It may be expensive to hire a bouncer, but you got to do it. You have to do it because the alternative is to let kids just wander in and get destroyed. VR Chat says it is working hard to make itself a safe and welcoming place for everyone. Predatory and toxic behaviour has no place on the platform. Meta stresses it's not responsible for other companies' apps and says, We provide tools that allow players to report and block users. We will continue to make improvements as we learn more about how people interact in these spaces. For children, the metaverse can be an exciting adventure, but it also poses a real risk of harm. Angus Crawford, BBC News.